When I was growing up, there were very few black elected officials. In fact, there were no black mayors when I was growing up. In the South, in places like Birmingham, there were no black police officers. There was just racial segregation. When I was young, I knew very few white people because Birmingham, Alabama, and most of the South were rigidly segregated by race. The only white people I knew were those that I worked for. I knew very little about white people, except I knew we stayed separated, and I thought as blacks we were terribly mistreated. Birmingham was oftentimes called by the international media the Johannesburg of the South. Johannesburg is the capital of South Africa, and at the time, Johannesburg was also a terribly racially segregated area. Back in 1962, students from Miles College started a civil rights movement down Birmingham. They formed uh, lines around all the stores because they would not hire blacks as sales clerks and things of that sort. They would not permit blacks to drink from certain fountains. They would not allow us to ride on the elevator. We had to ride on the freight elevator in the department stores. The Selma to Montgomery marches were organized in 1965 by black people enraged by southern state laws that barred black people from voting and other basic rights. When they left the church in Selma to, to march across the bridge to go start walking to Montgomery, the governor turned the highway patrolmen, the sheriff's officers on horses, and they beat us. They beat all of us. They beat women, old women, young women. They beat us bloody. The whole world was watching that on television. That is known as Bloody Sunday. One afternoon, four former students of mine from Miles College came. They asked me to run for mayor. I was not willing to do that. I had not even thought about running for any office. It's amazing to think that Dr. Arrington originally had no interest in politics at all, considering how much positive change he brought upon the city of Birmingham during his time as mayor. They thought it was time for the city of Birmingham to have some of these black citizens in political office. I suggested that they might want to come back the next day. Quite frankly, I was hoping they were not coming back. But sure enough, the next day they came back again, and I guess I was too embarrassed to say no. I had talked with them about being good citizens, about what good citizens do, and now they were asking me to be a good citizen. So I accepted, and I ran for office, and I was elected the second black elected to city government in the city of Birmingham. The rest is history. It was a international news, not just local news, not just national news. It was international news. When I was elected mayor of the city of Birmingham, the first black mayor, if you go to the archives in the library, if you pull up the newspaper from all over the world in all different languages, you will see the story of Birmingham electing a black mayor, and you will see my picture there. Because the world knew Birmingham as a racially segregated place, and they could not believe that Birmingham had changed to the point that it would one day elect a black mayor. We began to change Birmingham racially. The Civil Rights Institute is intended to tell the story of of the civil rights struggle. The heart of Birmingham today calls itself a civil rights city because of the Civil Rights Act coming out of Birmingham. The very heart of the civil rights district in Birmingham begins, the heart of it begins at the Civil Rights Institute, across the street, the 16th Street Baptist Church, across the street from the Civil Rights Institute. We try to tell a freedom walk story. We have monuments trying to tell the story. When I became mayor, out of 20 department heads in Birmingham, there was one black, a lawyer. 
I appointed 14 black department heads during the time I was mayor. During my time as mayor, we promoted women to department heads and all. Thank God, Birmingham has changed. The civil rights movement has changed. We changed government here. The only thing I say to young folks is that you ought to know our history. You ought to know what, what our struggle has been like. Just a few years ago, you had none of those rights. Somebody paid a price. And now, all I can say is hallelujah. We're moving on. That's the story. I do hold a degree from Birmingham Southern College. I can't remember you, but one year, Birmingham Southern gave me a doctorate degree, an honorary degree, that made me an alumnus of Birmingham Southern College.